In the vast expanse of the Indo-Pacific, where geopolitical currents swirl with the intensity of ancient tempests, Australia's acquisition of the MQ-4C Triton Unmanned Aerial System emerges as a profound testament to the nation's unyielding commitment to sovereignty and strategic equilibrium. Amidst the shadows of rising powers and the ceaseless murmur of maritime disputes, the Royal Australian Air Force's embrace of this high-altitude sentinel underscores a pivotal evolution in defence posture, one that marries technological prowess with the imperatives of alliance and deterrence. The recent milestones in the Triton program, culminating in the delivery of the second and third aircraft and the successful completion of initial test flights for the inaugural unit, illuminate not merely operational advancements, but a deeper narrative of resilience in an era fraught with uncertainty. The saga of Australia's Triton fleet began to unfold with deliberate gravity, its roots embedded in the cooperative framework forged with the United States Navy. In July 2024, the first MQ-4C Triton touched down on Australian soil, a harbinger of enhanced maritime domain awareness that would redefine the Australian Defence Force's vigilance over the expansive waters encircling the continent. This initial delivery, valued as part of a broader acquisition exceeding 1.5 billion Australian dollars, including vital upgrades to the complementary P-8A Poseidon fleet, marked the inception of a capability designed to pierce the veil of oceanic obscurity. By May 2025, the narrative advanced with the arrival of the second and third Tritons at RAF Base Tyndall in the Northern Territory. These behemoths remotely piloted across the Pacific from the United States Naval Air Station Patuxent River in Maryland. Their multi-day odyssey, a symphony of precision and international synergy, symbolized the unbreakable threads binding Canberra and Washington in the face of shared threats. Chief of Air Force Air Marshal Stephen Chappelle, in a statement resonant with the weight of command, heralded this as a significant milestone, one that delivers unprecedented persistence and awareness over Australia's extensive maritime domain in support of the integrated focused force. His words evoke the profound political undercurrents. In a region where the balance of power teeters on the edge of confrontation, the Triton's gaze extends Australia's strategic reach, fostering an integrated force capable of deterring aggression through unblinking surveillance. The political profundity of this development cannot be overstated. As the Indo-Pacific theatre witnesses the inexorable rise of assertive actors, nations whose naval ambitions cast long shadows across vital sea lanes, Australia's investment in the Triton program serves as a bulwark against instability. Operated by the RAAF's 9th Squadron from RAF Base Edinburgh in South Australia, Yet based at the northern bastion of Tyndall, these aircraft embody a doctrine of forward presence and rapid response. Wing Commander Laurie Benier, commanding officer of 9 Squadron, articulated the collaborative ethos underpinning this endeavour. The safe arrival of Australia's second and third MQ-4C Triton was the culmination of a large integrated effort across Defence, United States Navy and Northrop Grumman. He further mused on the horizon ahead, noting it would be an exciting and challenging period with significant learning opportunities as we continue to unlock and exploit the capabilities of the MQ-4C Triton. Such sentiments reflect the literary depth of military strategy, where each technological stride is a verse in the epic of national security penned amid the ceaseless dialogue between allies. Recent operational strides further etch this program's significance into the annals of Australian defence history. As of August 2025, the first Triton has completed its initial test flights under full Australian control. 
a feat that validates the seamless integration of this platform into the ADF's arsenal. This milestone, achieved mere weeks after the aircraft's inaugural sorties in July, demonstrates the Triton's readiness to contribute to a spectrum of missions, from intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, to anti-surface warfare and electronic warfare. On August 6, 2025, one such Triton was observed soaring at 46,000 feet over the Timor Sea, its flight path a silent affirmation of operational vitality, departing from and returning to Tyndall in a display of endurance that mirrors the geopolitical stamina required in these contested waters. These activities, conducted in the crucible of real-world conditions, underscore the Triton's role as a force multiplier, complementing the crude P-8A Poseidon in a family of systems architecture that amplifies Australia's capacity to monitor and protect its maritime interests. The cooperative dimension with the United States Navy infuses this program with profound geopolitical resonance. As a partner in shaping the Triton's requirements, Australia not only bolsters its own defences, but contributes to a shared intelligence ecosystem, enabling seamless data exchange between the ADF and US forces. This interoperability, forged in the fires of mutual strategic interests, stands as a counterpoint to isolationist impulses, reinforcing the AUKUS pillar and broader alliances in the face of revisionist challenges. The program's sustainment, secured through a $220 million interim contract with Northrop Grumman, extending to 2027, promises not only operational longevity, but economic dividends. Approximately 140 high-skilled jobs across the Northern Territory and South Australia, weaving defence innovation into the fabric of national prosperity. Looking toward the horizon, Australia's commitment to a fleet of four Tritons, affirmed in September 2023, with the approval of the fourth unit, charts a course through 2028, when the final aircraft is slated for delivery. This expansion, as articulated by Northrop Grumman executive Christine Zeitz, will enhance the resilience of the fleet and provide superior surveillance capability to monitor and protect Australia's maritime interests 24-7. In the grand tapestry of international relations, such enhancements are not mere acquisitions, but declarations of intent. Australia positioned at the confluence of oceans and ambitions, refuses to cede the narrative to adversaries. The Triton's persistent, high-altitude vigilance, capable of enduring flights that dwarf human limitations, embodies a literary metaphor for the enduring spirit of deterrence, where silence in the sky speaks volumes in the halls of power. Yet this narrative is not without its shadows, the program's political gravity invites scrutiny. In an age of fiscal constraints and ethical debates over unmanned warfare, the Triton's deployment raises questions of proportionality and autonomy. Critics may decry the reliance on foreign technology as a dilution of sovereignty, yet proponents counter that such partnerships amplify Australia's voice in global affairs, transforming potential vulnerabilities into strengths. As the Indo-Pacific simmers with tensions, from South China Sea encroachments to submarine incursions, the Triton's role transcends tactical utility, becoming a symbol of Australia's profound resolve to navigate the complexities of power with foresight and fortitude. In conclusion, the latest chapters in Australia's MQ-4C Triton saga from deliveries and tests to operational glimpses, herald a new epoch in military commentary, where technology and politics entwine in a dance of destiny. As the fourth Triton takes shape in production halls and the existing fleet sharpens its edge, Australia affirms its place as a guardian of the seas, a nation whose strategic vision pierces the fog of uncertainty. 
In this profound theater of global contest, the Triton stands not as a mere machine, but as an emblem of enduring vigilance, ensuring that the waves of change do not overwhelm the shores of freedom.